The February 1st, 2018 meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council president. I'll be presiding tonight. Let me first announce that we are audio and video recording these proceedings and they're being broadcast live on Northampton Community Television. So we'll begin with a period of public comment. It's an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any issue uh, they wish. We ask you only to keep it to three minutes or less. And the only other rule to remember is we're prohibited by our rules from engaging in a back and forth with you. It's your time to give your opinion to us. And the reason for those rules is to make sure everyone uh, has equal time and is heard fairly. And so with that, I'll go to my sign-up sheet to start with. The first person signed up is Dana Goldblatt. So I'm reading oh, from okay. Dana tonight. Um, well, would you give your name and address for Yeah, me? so my name is Blair Gemma and I live at 3 Clark Avenue. And um, Dana Goldblatt is also a Northampton resident. Um, so this is Dana's uh, words. Thanks. Um, if we are going to have a rule change to make the council chamber more open and accessible to more people, I don't think the first priority should be about chatting and clapping. I learned a lot attending eight council and city committee meetings. And the thing I found most distressing about our council meetings wasn't sometimes people clap or sometimes people boo. It was we have an armed paramilitary organization that appears periodically armed with guns to monitor council meetings, weigh in on council matters, and even sit at the council table. As between chatting, cheering, booing, and the armed paramilitary, the first three seem sort of benign and the last one way more problematic in a legislative session. If there's going to be a rule change to protect the integrity of the chamber, let's not focus on the chatting. Also, from a purely legal perspective, what just got proposed is a completely unworkable First Amendment catastrophe. But that's really besides the point. The point is, the council is supposed to be independent of the executive. It's supposed to be open and welcoming space for public participation. Armed duty officers undercut both goals. Chatting doesn't. Focus on what matters. Um, so those are Dana's words, and I'd also like to sure, go ahead. speak. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to comment um, not so much on the substance of the amendment to the city council rules, um, so the the new sentence being added to the conduct clause. Um, since that's going to legislative committees, and I'm sure we'll be notified at the new meeting time of le the legislative committee tonight. Um, but I wanted to comment on someone who was present here at the last meeting. Um, I felt that for something that was based on the substance of um, like public conduct, that that agenda was quite buried, um, or that that part of the agenda was quite buried in the agenda. Um, if it had in its description um, said something about public conduct, I think more, pub more of the public would have stayed and listened. Um, uh, the shoestring um, did not report on it. Um, that was my job and I missed it because it was buried, so I was uh, not proud of myself. Um, the Gazette did not cover it. They weren't present here last meeting. And Mass Live didn't cover it. Um, to my knowledge, it was covered three hours into the meeting. And when I watched the footage on YouTube, it was quite eerie to watch counselors um, talk about that at a time when they knew that people from the public weren't in the room. Um, so I guess a substantive change that I would like to see is that um, is it okay if I have like 30 more seconds since I'm speaking? Yeah, and that's, it's not Dana's. Um, is that if you're something, it's, I think it's your responsibility to go above and beyond and notify the public when a matter like that is being discussed. Um, and I don't think that's what happened. I, I'm sure, sure you didn't break any rules, but it felt hidden and it felt like an exclusive conversation. Um, and particularly last meeting, there was a round of applause and people stood up. Um, and so it would have been a great time to have had that discussion with the public um, when they were there. So um, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Um, the next person is Robert Lonsky. 
Hi, I'm Robert Ronsky. I am from Fruit Street, uh, 35 Fruit Street, Northampton. Uh, this isn't about anything on the agenda for tonight, but I woke up to some uh, some uh, messages about the panhandling uh, conversation from last night's town hall meeting. So I actually want to alleviate some um, some fa fears from the people. So I'm not actually addressing you. I'm addressing the, the camera, if that's okay. Uh, I am also on the Next Step Collaborative, uh, which is a city committee that deals with housing and homelessness issues. Um, and so I have a, a little bit of insight as, as to the panhandling committee and, and who's on it. And um, I, I would just say that the people who I know who are on that committee are people who have great experience with, with helping those in our community uh, who suffer from homelessness, mental uh, health issues, and addiction. Um, so I, I want to alleviate that. And I've also been part of the process of picking the, the, the panhandlers who are being surveyed. Um, and if they haven't been spoken to yet within the next week, uh, pretty much anybody you see out on the sidewalks of Main Street will have had their voice heard. Um, so if anybody um, is afraid that um, the voices aren't being heard, they are being heard. Um, and I do know um, um, our, some of our elected officials um, at the top are also talking with the people um, who are uh, homeless um, and their voices are being heard. So. Um, and I, I know we often come to this podium to criticize, and I, I, I just want to um, give kudos when, when, I, when I have insight to w where kudos is deserved, that the city is actually listening to all the voices. Um, so I just wanted that to be said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Cynthia Supis. Good evening, uh, my name is Cynthia Swopis and I reside at 120 Coles Meadow Road and I'm a member of the city's Board of Health. I would like to make three comments for the council to consider regarding the mayor's ordinance proposals that will be presented at tonight's meeting. In the interest of full disclosure, I was one of the 80 plus percent voters who voted to approve the legal retail sale of marijuana for recreational purposes. My comments this evening are focused on the Board of Health's responsibility to protect the health of its citizens. The city's early efforts to curb tobacco smoking in public places long before it became fashionable to do so illustrates that we've made a long-standing commitment to the health of our citizens through <coughs> prevention and policy. I would, as we draw closer to the opening of retail sales of marijuana, it is our responsibility to educate our tourists, our residents, our business owners, and the consumers of marijuana on the facts and myths of using cannabis substances. I would encourage the council to consider allocating a percentage of the proposed 3% tax on the sale of marijuana to public education and the prevention of substance abuse. Our substance abuse prevention efforts have have data to support a direct correlation between prevention and abuse as we continue to combat addiction in the city and surrounding communities. And we can provide you with that data upon request. A side note, I am not suggesting that, car that cannabis is a gateway drug or that the legalization of selling cannabis is going to lead to addiction. I'm only suggesting that national public health initiatives on prevention have proven track records of overuse and abuse. The mayor's proposal, as I understand it, does not intend to cap the number of retail marijuana establishments that can be um, uh, licensed in this city. The city currently caps all liquor licenses, and the city currently caps all establishments that sell tobacco products. Amherst has already approved a cap of eight, uh, um, eight retail uh, marijuana establishments, and East Hampton is considering a cap as well. I would ask that the City Council consider a cap on our number of retail establishments. And finally, the Board of Health currently permits and inspects both prepared and retail food item. The legalization of retail sales of marijuana will include the preparation and sale of edibles, which the Board will address in future regulations as Mass General Laws outlines in sanitary, packaging, nutritional disclosure, preparation, handling, storage, and expiration date standards. We want to do this right for our community. So I hope the council will take advantage of the numerous health educational resources in this community. A Northampton Prevention Coalition is one that can assist you in your deliberation of the ordinances and the procedures that support this initiative. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Next up is Joanne Levin, please. 
Good evening, uh, Joanne 1140 Columbus. Um, I am also here to talk about uh, marijuana. Um, and uh, I fully accept the decision of the voters of the state and the city to legalize the adult use of marijuana. Um, the science tells us, uh, however, that the regular use of marijuana by youth can have serious consequences on the developing brain. Um, and that is why I think it's incumbent upon you as city councilors and me as a member of the Board of Health uh, to try to ensure that marijuana stays out of the hands of youth as much as possible. Um, I have looked through the proposed regulations from the state, and I think there are many areas that are left vague, there are omissions, and there are areas that are left up to the city to um, make decisions on. Um, so I do think that we should have a local ordinance. Um, we should have uh, exert our control. Um, I think that public health and uh, the Northampton Prevention Coalition should have a seat at the table. So I guess the proposal goes to the ordinance committee, but I think they should be invited for their input because I think there's a lot yet to be decided. Um, Specifically, some of the issues are what to do with the 3% tax, and I agree with Cynthia that some of that money should go for prevention. Currently in the city, there are a number of positions uh, for uh, addiction um, and substance use uh, coordinators, but none of them are permanent positions. They're all grant funded, and so when those grants run out, we won't have any permanent position unless we dedicate some funds to that. Um, <coughs> And um, as part of our host agreement, uh, the city uh, has an agreement um, theoretically with an establishment, there should be Board of Health approved education at a point of sale on things like safe storage or drug driving. Um, and we should be sure that all establishments are limited to age 21 and over. And the current regs from the state, they do say that Retail establishments need to be 21 and over, but they really are vague about the, what they call mixed use establishments. Um, and there's not a, I think we should make a comment about mobile units. Uh, we do not permit mobile units for alcohol or cigarettes. And I think using the sort of framework we have for alcohol uh, would be, would make sense to do similar kinds of issues um, for marijuana. Um, again, the Department of Health should be empowered to permit and to inspect institutions that are preparing food. Um, and there are lots of other issues to discuss, caps on um, the number of establishments. Um, there is data that shows that capping the number of alcohol establishments decreases uh, uh, use and abuse among youth. Um, oh, okay. You want to um, finish your thoughts? I think that's the end. Um, so I just hope that we have a place at the table. Thank you very much. You. We appreciate it. Um, next up is Chris Palamas, please. Yeah, uh, Chris Palamas, 659 Park Hill Road. And um, I'm speaking tonight also as chair of the Disability Commission. And it's really um, a, a pleasure the, this evening to be um, to speaking to our surprise and delight uh, to have learned that the, the city is being uh, awarded up to $250,000 to address what is the first priority that we've identified now in more than a year of working on the updating of our self-evaluation and transition plan. Um, and that first priority being to actually improve the very deteriorated environment immediately outside of council chambers and between here, the back of City Hall and the side. Um, this program by the Mass Office on Disability, um, they did a previous $1 million allocation last year and we received a very small planning grant with which we began the process. And this was through the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Um, and the director of the office has been a terrific ally and, and um, also <coughs> prepared the grant proposal which addressed this first priority and what we hope will be 
<coughs> um, a continuing presentation to the city of steps forward on improving accessibility. Uh, but we've had great support in this process, first of all, from our ADA coordinator, who's facilitated all of our work, from the mayor, and from uh, Councillor Labarge, whose work over many years made it possible for the commission to have the the resources to undertake this planning process. So it's uh, terrific. We were flabbergasted, frankly, that it appears that we have received the maximum amount allowable, but appears to be one quarter of the funds being allocated statewide. And that's both, you know, uh, that's terrific. We have a responsibility of leadership, but we're also concerned that more municipalities may not have been competitive on this. So once again, we say uh, Northampton has an opportunity and an obligation to continue to show real leadership. So um, uh, thank you all, and particularly thank you to, to uh, Marianne Labarge, to, uh, um, to um, uh, Linda Desmond, our ADA coordinator, to the mayor, and to, uh, to Wayne at, uh, at the Office of Planning and Sustainability. And our thanks to you. The next person on the list is Ananda Lennox. You're all, you're all set. If you just give your name and address. Sure. Ananda Lennox, One Ever Green Road. And uh, I'm basically here to back up mostly what the Board of Health members have said. I'm here as a parent for this evening. I have three boys. Um, I voted for um, recreational marijuana legalization. I thought it was mostly a social justice issue. And because I work in substance abuse prevention, I feel inundated all the time with like, we've been studying the CCC regulations and have all this information and just feel like there, I was just glad that there was a forum tonight to just share a little bit of what we're learning as we go through it. And I think what I'd like um, to see happen for Northampton as a resident moving forward is, when I went through the regulations, I felt I was actually relieved. Mostly what I read was I'm like, wow, they really did their due diligence. There's a lot of good stuff in here. And my one concern at reading through it was like, how much local control is Northampton going to take advantage of? Like, are they going to take advantage of the tax that they can levy, all that sort of stuff? And so I'm glad to hear that's happening as well. My only concerns going into this um, would be to consider maybe um, restricting the outlet density. Like right now, without having caps, it seems like it, you know, since this is kind of a, big, a grand experiment, it would make sense to me as a parent and also somebody who has a background in prevention to just slow the growth at first to just see how it, the community adapts to it. You know, there's a lot of fear in prevention that increased sales um, is going to just increase exposure to youth. And I, I'm, I'm really doubtful that there's going to be kids able to access anything through these retailers because I think if we do keep it 21 and older, especially if you can do it in mixed use as well, that's not really going to be a risk. It's going to be the secondary sales, you know, or the gray market that could develop. So um, my only other concern other than outlet density is um, how are we going to handle public consumption? And I'm not talking about on-site consumption. I'm talking about, you know, we have all these smoking ordinances where you're not supposed to smoke on the street, but you still see people smoking cigarettes. So if going downtown is now going to be like tobacco and marijuana, like I, I would, I would rather not see that happening. I think um, it's not that I'm afraid my kids are going to see marijuana smoke and be like, I want to smoke it. It's more like it's in a nuisance, and it's just another conversation I don't want to have when we're trying to have like a relaxing afternoon downtown. So that's really all I have. So thank you. Right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And next is Amy Bookbinder, please. Amy Bookbinder, Grove Avenue in Leeds. Um, hello. First, I want to thank the council president for a very well attended and informative town hall last night. It was great. I'm here tonight in support of the TPS resolution that will be introduced and in support of the 100% renewable energy resolution. I'm also here to speak about the proposed conduct amendment introduced at the 11th hour at your last meeting, which I wasn't able to attend but watched from home on local cable TV, in which Councillor Bidwell, barely audible, described the amendment as addressing civility at council meetings. 
I don't know if he spoke so quietly because he was embarrassed to be putting forth his proposal or not, but he should be embarrassed and ashamed as should his co-sponsors and any counselors who support it. I strongly disapprove of the amendment, and it's my constitutional right to disapprove. I request that the amendment be withdrawn. I want to thank the counselors who objected to the amendment and the ways in which it stands to threaten the democratic process of this council. I'll have more to say about civility and conduct when the Legislative Matters Committee takes it up soon, I assume. I invite members of the public to attend that meeting. This amendment is unconstitutional and a further attempt by some counselors to silence dissent. Just like the Orwellian attempt to spy on residents of and visitors to this city was. Those of us who helped to defeat that effort will also engage in this uncivic and uncivil effort to infringe on our rights again. To the public, we again say, join us. We will not be intimidated or silenced by this effort to do so. We are here, heterosexual, non-binary, and queer, young and old, citizens and immigrants. We're back. Thank you very much. Other, well, that's okay. I'll just ask, is there anyone else who I didn't call who would like to speak? Yes, sir, I'll just, come on up, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, yes, Councillor Councilor Dwight and uh, Eric Harkins, uh, 40 Suffolk Street, now 81 Grove Street. Uh, I believe we all probably concur that the uh, Mexican wall is kind of an, an absurdity, but given that panhandling is an issue in Holyoke, Northampton, and Springfield, we realize that uh, job source, or jobs are scarce, so maybe you can almost understand Trump's concerns. I think he was going for merit-based policy on Mexican immigration. Um, personally, I'm lucky I get a roofing gig for 12 bucks an hour, so I think we're all struggling. Um, I don't believe panhandling ought to be illegal. Um, Low-income housing is still an issue. It came up a possible project on Hamden in Holyoke. Um, there are abandoned buildings in Holyoke that could be renovated into low-income housing. Uh, it's been mentioned. Um, it's kind of up in the air right now. Uh, we'll look further into it. Abandoned buildings in Holyoke for abandoned house for uh, low-income housing. Um, came to mind maybe a greenhouse in the Alamo. You know, just sort of a touch of better than remember the Alamo and. <laughs> Bring up angst, uh, sort of a positive. Uh, there are farms, farms abound in the states. Uh, immigrant labor shouldn't be outlawed. Um, given Hatfield around the, around the country. Um, we're looking at a community plot in Holyoke. I know that's not this district, but on High Street in Holyoke across from Sam's or Store 24. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So we'll go with you. Come on up, please. Hi, thanks. My name is Heather Warner. I live on Pine Street in Florence. Um, I am the parent of teens and a prevention specialist here in Northampton. Um, and I'm here to speak on the marijuana issue. Um, first of all, I um, just want to sort of say that, you know, I feel like first and foremost, we need to have more public dialogue about this issue. I'm sort of shocked that um, there has been no public forum, um, you know, and very little public input around the issue. Um, I'm going to just go through a, a sort of a list of recommendations so I don't run out of time and then I'm going to go into a little more detail. Um, so one recommendation is that we hold public forums um, to get input. I think even the business community ha might have something to say about unlimited um, retail outlets down, downtown um, and whether they're right next to their own business, for example. Um, you know, I think we need a cap on the number of establishments in Northampton and, and take the lead of other communities that are doing this, even those communities that are pro-marijuana. Um, I think that we need to adopt city ordinances that reflect and reinforce the Board of Health smoke-free regulations. Um, Amherst has done this as an example, and they even added um, a no public consumption of edibles in, in town. 
um, and in public places. I think that zoning, we at least need to keep a 500 foot buffer. I'm not clear, I know that in some of the ways the regulations are written, they're from the entrance of the school. I think it needs to be all school property as well. We need to ensure that. But 200 feet from a school or a daycare or, or facility. Um, also, you know, the um, CCC regulation gets really vague around this, the K through 12 plus preschool maybe plus daycare. It just it's, it gets a little clear. And as a town, we could actually make sure that those um, sensitive areas are included in the buffer by adding them. We can add other areas too, like maybe we don't want to have them right next to a recovery um, center or a um, you know addiction cent uh, re um, treatment center or a faith community. So I think these are things that we need to talk about as a community. Um, I also think we need to ensure um, other measures for local control, um, maybe consider issuing s special permits so that we can slow the process down when it comes to these licenses, which are going to be issued by the state. Um, we don't get to license them locally. So we, we do have the ability to use special permits, however. Um, I'm glad that the city is going up to the 3% maximum revenue. I know that there's also some money that can be gained in the social host agreements. And um, you know, I think we should take advantage of that as well. I think that we should consider dedicating some of that revenue to prevention efforts. Um, I also just, um, in terms of um, the need for caps, um, there's a lot of uh, one point. I don't want to time. Is um, there's a lot of stresses on a community by um, the cash-only business. Um, there's. Um, enforcement of our smoke-free regulations. There's enforcement of no smoking. So there's a lot of issues here. Um, lastly, I just want to mention that we collect a lot of data on youth use. And in Hampshire County, 40% of seniors are regularly using marijuana in our community. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, do we have anyone else? Ms. Desmond? <coughs> Director Desmond? Um, I just, uh, Linda Desmond, I'm 50 Middle Street. Um, I just wanted to um, say it, just about what um, Chris said, how proud I am to be working with such a, a, an incredible um, resource of people um, who are just truly brilliant. And um, I just want to say thank you because, um, because of the grant that we have received, the $250,000, um, from really hard work and good partnership. Um, I, Wayne Fiden is just a gem. And, um, and Chris Palamas is, he's just, uh, he's noted throughout um, the United States for his, his legal uh, support and advocacy for disability, and he's one of us. Um, Kimberly, um, Judy, Judith Kimberly, and Mayor Narkowitz, um, what a team, and it was such a pleasure to work with them. And I hope you consider the, um, our request to um, help with, uh, come, come, come up with just a little bit of that money needed for the design. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now let's see, who else do we have? Anybody? Ms. Moulton? Come on up. Good evening. My name is Sharon Moulton. I live at 48 Evergreen Road in Leeds. And I want to say a few words in support of the resolution, in support of 100% renewable energy, which is on the docket for its second reading tonight. And there was a lot of support last time. But after last night, I, I felt I needed to get up because I left um, Councillor O'Donnell's meeting and walked up the street a little to the Unitarian Society where they were live streaming the 100% renewable fast event from DC and Bill McKibben and Bernie Sanders and a, a, a young woman who graduated a couple years ago from UMass but she led the divestment you know so I got to know her then spoke it was a it was a really great event, and the, it, when they list what you need to do right now, the number one action is getting your municipality to pass an ordinance. And they showed a map, and there were, I, I, I couldn't quite, re I didn't jot down in the dark what the number was, but it was in the 20s of communities that have passed the hundred percent and I know they're a little behind because they listed the communities and Amherst wasn't on it yet but I was just thinking oh and tomorrow night we'll be a star and a flicker of light 
and I'm really happy that we're doing that. And um, Bill was saying, please get this done be before September of 2018, because the Global Climate Action Summit is happening on the West Coast somewhere, which I forget. I didn't get a chance to write it down. So we're going to be ahead of the game, and I'm really proud of that. But I'm here to remind us that passing the resolution is just the first step that we have to make sure that we actually meet the goals. And I just want to say that as a citizen, I'm willing to do whatever I can and attend whatever meetings and make whatever phone calls and remind people as much as I can so that we become one of the lights on an even smaller map that barely exists now of communities that have moved to 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to give public comment this evening? If not, we will convene, and I'll ask that the roll of the <coughs> Here. Present. Here. <coughs> Council of Barge. Here. Council of Barge. Here. 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 Okay. So we're convened. I'll start with uh, some public hearings. First, an announcement of a public hearing uh, that will be held during the City Council. Committee on Finance, which is within the full City Council, concerning the Northampton Capital Improvement Program for fiscal year 2019 through 2023, submitted by Mayor Narkowitz on January 29, 2018. Uh, in accordance with the Charter of Northampton, Article 7, Finance and Fiscal Procedures, uh, the Capital Improvement Program. Um, a public hearing will be held again on Thursday, March 1, 2018, at 7 o'clock in the City Council Chambers, located here in uh, the Municipal Building, 212 Main Street, Northampton. The Council will consider the Capital Improvement Program for fiscal year 2019 through 2023, and hear all persons who wish to be heard hereon. So that is the first City Council meeting in March. And now today we have a hearing that was previously announced. This is a petition to install an underground conduit at 23 Atwood Drive. Um, and in accordance with the provisions of Section 22, Chapter 166 of the General Laws, um, this is a public hearing on this petition of National Grid to install uh, these underground facilities under a public way on Atwood Drive. So is there a motion to open the hearing? Make a motion. Second. And all those in favor of opening the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is open. Uh, are there any proponents? Please. Lisa Jasinski with National Grid. Good evening. Jess, we're just looking for permission to install some underground conduit and three phase power across the street at Atwood Drive. It's going to come from between the two new buildings that have just gone up, and we're now providing power to the next new building that will be going up on Atwood Drive. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion among the council? Uh, everyone has reviewed the documents. Um, okay. Are there other proponents or any opponents? Anyone else who would like to speak to the question of granting the petition? Move to close public hearing. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of closing the public hearing, please say aye. 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 Close no. So the public hearing is closed, and this will be on our consent agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I have no updates. Um, by accident, we don't <coughs> have the one minute announcements listed, but it's totally fine for counselors to provide informational, non substantive updates about community events because they are not <laughs> subject to the open meetings law. So I will ask if there are one minute announcements from any members of the council this evening. Councilor Sherrick. Um, this Monday, the Northampton Democratic City Committee is holding its annual caucus and meeting. Uh, that's uh, Monday, February 5th, 7 p.m. at the community room in J at JFK Middle School. Um, and the purpose of that caucus is to elect delegates to the state convention in June. Um, for And they will then be deciding which um, Democratic gubernatorial candidate will appear on the ballot. So anyone who is a registered Democrat by the time of the start of the caucus 
can come and participate in that or run to be, de be a delegate. So that's again Monday at 7 p.m. at JFK. Thank you very much. Councilor Dwight. Uh, relative to some public comment, I'll just let folks know that uh, the next legislative matters meeting will be meeting on uh, February 12th at 5 o'clock in these chambers. Thank you. Any other one minute announcements of Councilor Nash? Um, it, to uh, repeat, I've already, I've already sent this out to uh, share with counselors, but for the public to know. The Cannabis, cannabis Control uh, Commission will be holding a hearing on Monday from 2 to 5 at HCC, and that um, anybody who's interested in the topic of retail marijuana, they will, the, the uh, commission is holding hearings to hear what people have to say about it. Um, and since, um, you know, most of the regulations are coming down from the state at this time, um, I, I encourage people to go and um, voice their concerns and their ideas. Thank you. Any other announcements from the council? Are there any communications from the mayor this evening? No, okay. Thank you. I would like to actually move the consent agenda up since we have someone here for one of the items. Actually, there are multiple people, I believe, who are here for some, these items. So. The consent agenda contains the following things. The approval of the minutes of January, January 10th, 2018. Uh, the approval of uh, the National Grids, of National Grid's petition for an underground conduit at 23 Atwood Drive. An application for a secondhand dealer's license for Tim's Used Books, Inc. Uh, various appointments to the Housing Partnership, License Commission, and Trust Fund Committee which will be uh, equivalent to the referral of these to uh, the Committee on City Services for e examination. Uh, these include um, Helen Kahn and Julio Alves for, well, now I have to, do you have the uh, appointments and who's going where? We're going to just. You got Gerald Bunker, too. Mr. Alves is going to the Housing Partnership. Okay, good. And then finally, Ger uh, Gerald Bugger, who is, it's a reappointment to Housing the Park. Trust Fund uh, Committee. Trust Fund. Yeah. Thank you. So those are on the consent agenda. And finally, an application for a taxi cab license for the Cosmic Cab Company. So are there any removals from the consent agenda for the purpose of discussion? Uh, if not, is there a motion to approve the Make a motion. Made second. by Councillor Dwight. I'll second. S okay. <laughs> Seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Uh, no discussion. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 No. I'm going to abstain. From the entire thing? From the whole thing. Yeah, there's only one issue, but it's not worth breaking it out. All so. right. So the consent agenda is approved 8 to 0 with one abstention. Councilor Murphy. Thank you very much. Um, now we are going to jump back up to resolutions. First is a second reading. This is 18.003, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Northampton in support of 100% renewable energy. If there's no objection, I will waive the, waive the reading of this long resolution, yes. which was read last time. Is there a motion to approve this and second? Make a motion approve. Made by Councilor Barge and seconded by Councilor Klein. Any discussion on second reading? If not, why don't we have a roll call? Yes. 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 Okay. So the resolution is approved unanimously. Um, now 18.031. This is a resolution calling for the Department of Homeland Security to extend <coughs> temporary protected status or TPS for all nationals who cannot safely return to their home countries. I, I will read this one. This is in the City Council February 1st in the year 2018 upon the recommendation of Councillor Marianne Labarge, Councillor Willie Mage Dwight, and Councillor James Nash. Whereas Northampton is a sanctuary city and we maintain a long and proud history as a community that supports, values, and respects immigrants, regardless of their status of documentation, and we embrace refugees escaping war and natural disasters. And whereas temporary protected status, or TPS, is a form of immigration status that provides employment authorization and protection from deportation for foreign nationals who cannot be safely returned to their home countries. 
And whereas it is estimated that ending TPS for immigrants from El Salvador, Haiti, and Honduras would result in a $6.9 billion reduction to Social Security and Medicare contributions over a decade, and the deportation of these individuals um, would cost taxpayers approximately $3.1 billion. And whereas TPS keeps families together, safe, and productive while their countries of origin are still struggling with the lack of jobs and crime. And whereas the city of Northampton recognizes the overwhelmingly positive contributions of TPS holders and their families to the economy, social fabric, diversity, and well-being of our community. And whereas the Department of Homeland Security, or DHS, has decided to not extend designations of temporary protected status for all nationals that currently hold uh, TPS, including over 300,000 Salvadoran, Honduran, Nicaraguan, and Haitian immigrants. <coughs> And whereas in light of the Trump administration's radical increase of interior and exterior immigration enforcement through executive orders, funding requests, and policy guidance, the continued existence of TPS is very much at risk. Now, therefore, <coughs> by resolved, the Northampton City Council supports the temporary protected status program and is calling on the Department of Homeland Security to reconsider the decision to not extend the TPS program supporting immigrants and refugees escaping war, natural disasters, and crime. And be it further resolved that City Clerk B and is hereby requested to forward a suitably engrossed copy of this resolution to President Donald Trump, Homeland Security Secretary Kristen Nielsen, Congressman James McGovern, and Massachusetts Senators Edward Markey and Elizabeth Warren on behalf of the North American City Council. So motion on this one. Second. It's, so we have a motion approved from Councilor Barge and seconded by Councillor Nash. Thank you. Discussion on this resolution, please. Should we start with our sponsors? Councillor Nash. Thank you. Um, so um, first off, uh, I, I want to thank um, my colleagues, uh, Councillor Dwight and Councillor for Labarge for working on this resolution with me. Um, I'd also, you know, I want to put a shout out to Jonathan Goldman, mm -hmm. who um, recently, recently was elected to the State Democratic Committee and has been going like gangbusters and, um, and, and brought this to our attention, and that's why this is before us today. Um, uh, I also, um, uh, you know, it, since this, you know, we, we, we posted this, uh, I've heard from, uh, we've heard from Pioneer Valley Workers Center. And uh, they, they also, they're looking forward to adding ideas to this resolution and also providing testimony. Um, so that um, next, for second reading, we're anticipating uh, people who can actually speak to what it's like to live um, under these, under this status and um, how harrowing it can be. And, um, and I'd like to uh, thank uh, Councillor Klein for pointing the uh, Worker Center our way. Um, the, so I, for, for tonight, I just want to add, uh, I'm, I just want to provide some background. Uh, the, and a lot of this is just pulled off the web. The, the Secretary of Homeland Security may designate a foreign country for TPS due to conditions in the country that temporarily prevent the country's nationals from returning safely or in certain circumstances where the country is unable to handle the return of its nationals adequately. The Secretary may designate a country for TPS due to the following temporary conditions in the country. Ongoing armed conflict, such as a civil war. An environmental disaster, such as uh, an earthquake or hurricane or an epidemic other extraordinary and temporary conditions. So who are the people we're talking about tonight? Uh, so the, the people from, that are here from El Salvador, uh, there was an earthquake in 2001. It registered somewhere between 7.1 and 7.9. Um, and um, 944 people were killed, 5,565 injured, uh, 108,000 uh, houses were destroyed. Uh, 169 houses were damaged. Um, in the, uh, the, the, 
the city of El Salvador, 150,000 buildings were destroyed. Um, and hence, the, 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 that's what people were escaping. Um, in 2010, there was an earthquake in Haiti. Uh, again, it was uh, quite a big, uh, where is it in here? I believe it, it, it was around seven on the Richter as well. Um, that there were 52 aftershocks. So not only did the, the quake devastate many homes uh, near Port-au-Prince, uh, that people were sleeping out in the streets for uh, many nights because they were afraid to go back into their homes uh, that hadn't collapsed because um, the, the quakes, the quake, the aftershocks were still going on. Um, Honduras. Um, that uh, Hurricane Mitch um, ravaged the country in 1998 and killed about 7,000 people um, and also devastated the agricultural sector. Um, President Trump has set a hard date to end TPS for these individuals, September 2019. Some of these people have lived here for over 20 years. Most have families own homes and cars and uh, live lives that just like us. Um, they are not here illegally. They are good neighbors and citizens. And they have been playing by the rules that we have set up. And, and our business-minded president should know this, that they are good for business and good for our economy. Candidate Trump stated over and over and very crassly, I might add, that he would only deport the bad hombres, swaying, in, in the process, swaying many independent voters on his way to electoral victory. He has broken this promise repeatedly. Mr. Trump's immigration policies are harsh and lacking compassion. He has already deported good citizens, good workers, good parents, and broken up families. His hard line with TPS <coughs> will bring more of the same for um, these families from, for, from Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Haiti. As the great-grandson of people who survived the famine in Ireland and came to this country through our great eastern ports or quietly up the Mississippi, I ask that my colleagues join me in supporting this resolution to extend temporary protected status for our neighbors from Honduras, El Salvador, and Nicaragua, and ha Haiti. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Um, I am in support of this resolution 100%, and I'm proud to be one of the sponsors to ex extend temporary protected status to all nationals who cannot safely return to their home countries. The Department of Homeland Security does not want to extend the designations of TPS. Why? Why? We want answers. I, I'm just so upset with this. Local immigrants are being adversely affected by Trump's administration policies. We need to focus on family, reunification, not division. They are so afraid to come out of their shadows, and this should not be happening. I have never seen anything like this in my life. The way immigrants are being treated is unacceptable. Our city of Northampton is a sanctuary city, and we support, values, and respect immigrants. They are our families. TPS keeps families together, safe, and productive. They should not be separated. They are our families here in our city. Their contributions mean so much to our economy and their diversity and their respect to our community. I feel our senators need to step up and move quickly to help and protect their rights. I want all immigrants who live in our sanctuary city of Northampton to know we are very supportive and will be there for them. Thank you. Other comments. Um, back 
not all that long ago when we were a more moral land with with a sense of altruism that we actually afforded um, the dreamers we afforded um, people who were in ravaged countries um, sanctuary uh, not only just sanctuary and protection but a place where they could be safe and feel safe and live and thrive and as such as Councilor Nash mentioned these folks registered they signed up and met all the obligations required of them in order to qualify for these for this status they're the low-hanging fruit for of a very cynical administration when they're going after in, in a very bigoted fashion after immigrants after people from nations that they've identified as being well actually i'm not allowed to say the word actually because respecting the decorum of the of the council but these are uh, you, you recall that the president recently um, iterated his uh, countries that he didn't think worthy of participating in the in this democratic experiment that we suppose that we brag on all over the world and then we repel people who come invited sign up abide by the rules we know where they live we know where they go to school we know where they bank we know where they work these people are particularly vulnerable because they actually have no they they don't live in an underground circumstance like some other unregistered um, immigrants who oddly enough may enjoy greater protections these people are more, more vulnerable and it is just a cynical grotesque display to appease and appeal to some of the more baser attitudes and instincts in this country that are more a source of shame and why we suddenly brandish it as a source of jingoism is really galling to me. So I'm, I'm grateful that at least we can appeal. To not appeal, I mean, I don't have any, I have no illusions that Donald Trump will pick up this resolution and go, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> I mean, Northampton, they've opened my eyes. But the fact is, it's not saying anything is complicity. It's being engaged in allowing this kind of governance, and I use the term loosely in this context, to continue. And I, for one, really would not like to ever be considered a participant or a, 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 a silent consenter. I, I object, and I believe this council objects, I believe this community objects, as loudly as we possibly can. So there, there is this resolution for that. Any other discussion? And so the, the preference is to have a first reading on tonight in anticipation of further public comment, maybe some changes the next meeting? OK. Um, well, I'll just say thank you. Um, unlike the pessimism I get by looking at national events, um, the three counselors who wrote this, um, I, I, I find that work in, inspiring, and um, thank, thank you for doing that. So, shall we have a roll call on this? Yes. Okay. Um, so, roll call whenever we're ready for that. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 The resolution passes unanimously on first reading. And we'll come back at our next meeting as well. And now we're up to our committee on finance, which occurs within the city council. So it's time to convene the finance. Excellent. Uh, you call the roll of finance, please. Thank you. Here. Present. Yes. Here. Thank you. Um, first is to approve the minutes from our meeting on January 18th. Do we have a motion on that? Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And now for financial orders for tonight. The first one is 18018, an order to appropriate $20,000 in Whiting Street Trust Funds. <clears throat> Where is the Whiting Street? Um, whereas Mr. Whiting Street, I don't think he's actually Mr. Whiting Street, a successful Northampton businessman left $25,000 to the city of Northampton in his will in 1875 with instructions that the money be used for relief and comfort of the worthy poor. And whereas the Whiting Street 
Fund Committee, which was created by an administrative order, issued its first ever grant application seeking proposals from local organizations with the goal of helping low income persons in our community and with a specific focus on helping to resolve food insecurity issues in the community. And whereas the Whiting Street Fund Committee received and reviewed the applications and has made recommendations to the mayor, um, now therefore order that $20,000 be appropriated from the interest in the Whiting Street Trust Fund to the following organizations. $10,000 to the Mana Soup Kitchen for the purchase of a used van. Mana will match the grant with $5,000 and will purchase the van, which is an integral part um, to its mission of providing meals to hungry people in Northampton. Mana serves four lunches and one dinner 52 weeks of the year and has worked tirelessly on behalf of those in need for 31 years. Uh, $5,000 to the Northampton Survival Center to support their basic nutritional needs program, which provides healthy seven-day supplies of food to each member of every household that comes to them. The Northampton Survival Center is in its 39th year of operation as an emergency food pantry. <coughs> and $5,000 to Grow Food Northampton, Inc. to support their incentive-based food access initiatives, which make it more convenient and affordable for low-income residents to purchase healthy food, product, uh, food produced by local farmers. The funding will help support SNAP, SHARE, Big Red Bag, Senior SHARE, Red Bag, Family SHARE, and Tuesday's Market um, SNAP Matching. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Okay. Second. And the mayor can tell us about this one. Well, I, you know, we tried to be descriptive in the uh, whereases, but uh, as you remember, we did um, uh, uh, eliminate the former Board of Almoners um, and uh, created this new Whiting, uh, uh, Whiting Street uh, Trust Fund Committee. Um, and uh, and the, the shift was that instead of having individuals apply to the committee, um, that we would in turn come up with an RFP process, issue it, and uh, with a specific focus every year, um, and then uh, select uh, nonprofit organizations that serve low-income people in our community and just deliver those monies to them. So this is actually the first distribution under this new format. Um, the committee will be, um, you know, will be meeting with the, um, the, the grant recipients uh, uh, later in the year to get a progress report on, um, on how they've done with it. And, uh, and then they'll be, you know, coming up with what their focus will be for next year. So. I'm thankful to the commission, to the committee for their work, and hope you can support their recommendations as well as I do. Questions for the mayor, councilor? Um, just, I just wanted to note. So uh, we didn't read the letter that Susan Wright wrote to you, kind of going over the, um, what the recommendations were. But it was noted that Mana had asked for less than it's being recommended, and I just wanted to note, having done CDBG. Um, uh, allocations with Councilor Labarge for multiple years now that MANA always asks for just the very bare minimum and um, and it always says that somehow <coughs> they'll make do and somehow they'll find what they need mm -hmm. elsewhere which seems to be what they'd ask this time so I just want to note that that I'm really glad that we are giving them more than they asked yeah, for I think the committee never asked for enough the committee was concerned that that you know ten that five thousand okay. dollars toward a used van was not going to get them much of a used van. It would be very, very used. Uh, so they really felt strongly that they wanted to give them additional money. So that's why they basically gave them more than they asked for. Um, part so of a pattern of exactly, not. exactly. So uh, yeah, so that's, uh, again, they had a limited amount of money, they had requests from multiple organizations, and they tried their best to balance it out. So but thank you for noting. <coughs> Uh, Councillor Barr, you had a question. Yeah. I, I just want to echo what Councillor Gina Louise Shearer said because I was waiting to speak about that. And it's so true. Every year, never asked us for an increase. And I'm, I'm really happy about this. Mm -hmm. Councillor Klein? Um, referencing the whole CDBG allocation thing, I'm just I'm curious if. Um, these allocations are going to affect decisions or ha if there's going to be any kind of discussion about the fact that some of these organizations that have historically received, C received CBGB funds. Did I say that right? Yes. CBGB um, C C <laughs> funds. I was on that allocation committee too, so I should know how to say that. Um, if, if there's going to be any kind of a way in which uh, a decision is going to be made to allocate less because they're receiving the Whiting Street funds and 
how do these two funds interact? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, clearly um, community development block grant uh, monies are you know under the social services program. You know, has very strict guidelines about who can apply, and and um, uh, it's much broader uh, discretion on the. Um, you know, on the Whiting Street Fund, uh, says to the worthy poor of the community. Um, I know that one of the things that the um, that the committee looked at when they were trying to formulate how they would do this. So this year they decided to focus on food insecurity. So I'm a, there, I think the plan is that each year they're going to focus on a different aspect. So I think that you know, for example, you know, there's a pattern here: Grow Food Northampton, Mana, uh, and um, and the Survival Center. Um, for example, if they decide to focus on heating assistance, you'll probably see a whole other set of uh, of nonprofits. So I think that's the. But there's no, there's certainly no stipulation um, that you, because you apply for one, you couldn't apply for the other. Um, and uh, so, and in fact, you know, Grow Food receives CPA funds for things and receives other funds to other grant programs that doesn't limit them from applying. So. You know, that's that would be my position, but it's sort of this is the first year we're doing it. But I do know the intent is to switch around to different uh, different areas. I guess what I'm trying to say is I just hope that the organizations that are receiving Whiting Street funds aren't going to be you know penalized in some Oh, that would not be my intention. And they're considered for yeah. other. Yeah, no, that would not be my intention. Um, and again, it's a. CDBG funds, I make the recommendation. I mean, I make the funding decisions on this one. I'm the committee makes the re recommendation to me, and then I'm asking you to to agree and appropriate the funds. So, but no, I think that's a good point. And I and it's, we're talking about small amounts of money here, um, so it's uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Yep, Councilor Bidwell. Um, yes, I, I just wanted to uh, applaud the the decision to to take this fund and focus it in a particular area. <clears throat> and while doing so, to support really, really important nonprofit organizations. Um, and I'd also like to mention that one criticism of most grant making organizations is that they change priorities from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. And I would just <coughs> throw out for consideration that maybe some multi multi year commitments, not, not multi year commitments, but sticking in one important area for more than just one year rather than keep switching around. Might might be worthy of consideration. That's all. Um, and and secondly, I'll I'll I, I support the uh, uh, the the notion that Mana is an incredibly worthy organization, and they uh, are always bashful about asking for what they need. So I applaud the uh, the committee for taking the initiative to increase beyond what they asked for. I, thank you, you know, Councillor, for your comments. And again, the whole. I actually was serving on the Board of Almoners when I first got elected because the mayor by charter was on the Board of Almoners. Um, and it was sort of a <coughs> puzzling, it was just, it was a strange setup because we here it was a, a group of mostly citizens and myself, um, and we really didn't have a, a way in a public meeting that had to be posted to evaluate people's financial, you know, finances and, and to talk about those things. So it was really just a, not a great fit. So that's one of the reasons why we decided let's move away from that model. Let's give it to organizations that already know how to yep. do that and exactly. already, you know, are set up to do that. So I think it's going to be a much better model, but I'll certainly pass along your comments to uh, to the committee. Councilor Barge, if I yes, And I think this is great going in the direction, Mayor, that you and everybody making this change thank you thank you thank you for supporting it the any council. other questions in finance hearing none then all in favor of a positive recommendation please say aye 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 opposed all right the next one is uh 18 zero oops make sure there was another one on the other side no, 18 um, zero one nine this is an order to rescind borrowing i think many times the pointers are here and ask for for us to approve borrowing to do a grant and they hope the to do a purchase and they hope to get a grant and here's four occasions where they did get the grants um, order that the City Council rescind only the borrowing authority granted in the following orders because such borrowing authority is no longer necessary five hundred thousand dollars of borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved on May 19th 2016 for the acquisition of land located on Birchfoot Road Stone Ridge Road Overlook Drive to acquire land to add to the Broadbrook Marsh Conservation Area since the city has received a land self-help grant 
uh, for the acquisition, and that was Brookwood, a $450,000 borrowing authority authorized under the loan approved on May 19, 2016 for the acquisition of land between Glendale and West Hampton Roads to connect the Mineral Hills Conservation Area with the West Farms to be rescinded as the city has received a land self-help grant for that acquisition. The City Council rescinded the following orders because such borrowing authority is no longer necessary. A $625,000 borrowing authority authorized under the loan approved on May 19, 2016 for improvements to Look Memorial Park be rescinded as the City did not receive a grant from the Parklands Acquisition and Renovations for Community Grant and a $50,000 borrowing authority authorized under the loan approved September 1, 2011 for design costs associated with the replacement of engines at the flood control pumping station uh, since other funds have been identified to pursue this work. Uh, do we have a motion to finance? Motion. Second. Second. And any questions uh, from the mayor on this one? Just, I would just say, you know, in this case, two of them are grants we got. Um, one was a grant we didn't get, um, so we're going to rescind the borrowing order. And then the third one is just an, an, an older uh, sort of holdover order uh, that predated the, um, the stormwater and flood control utility. Um, and so this was a general fund borrowing uh, authorization that was never acted upon. Um, and actually the DPW is moving forward with this project um, already under the stormwater uh, utility. So uh, we were trying to clean this up by getting this off our, our borrowing list. Questions from anyone? Councilor yes. Barge. Mayor, um, I'm a little concerned about the 625,000 um, that it wasn't approved for Look Memorial Park. Can we go back and reapply again? Yeah, they, um, I mean, this was a park grant um, and they applied uh, for the park grant. Um, we often, uh, we often coordinate with them each year uh, because they are eligible to apply. Uh, and, and so, you know, some years the city has applied uh, for various, you know, projects. And so we did um, work with them for them to apply. They didn't get the grant. Okay. Um, so they could certainly apply again in a future round. Okay. Um, but in terms of the problem is, is that this shows up as a $625,000 um, obligation on our books. So when we, you know, do our bond rating call in a couple of few weeks, um, this will show up as, as an obligation, even though we don't have any intent of using it. So that's one of the other reasons why we want to take these obligations off our books, because we're not using them. Thank you. So other questions on these? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The next one is 18-0. <coughs> in order to reprogram money for the Academy of Music stage doors <coughs> and Atlantic Foundation repairs. Order that $4,200 of funds appropriated for the Academy of Music stage doors be reprogrammed for the purpose of repairing in, or preparing engineering plans for an anticipated foundation repair in the loading dock area of the Academy of Music. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. 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 All right. Um, this is just um, using some funds that were already appropriated for a, a project that's ongoing, the um, working on fixing the stairs and making accessible a stage door. Um, some of you may have noticed that as part of the Pulaski Park uh, Phase Two project, um, we did some work around the back of the academy, um, including regrading the, the sort of the slope properly so that it was a proper loading dock so that when you actually backed a truck up, the actual back of the truck lined up um, before that wasn't the case. Um, and so um, as part of that, some of the f foundation of the uh, Academy of Music be was exposed in that, in that process. So we're gonna do some, some work on it just to make sure that it's protected from water and from, there's nothing urgent, but, uh, but the exposed, you, know, you can take a look at it. It's sort of, you can tell it's an old foundation. Um, and so we want to be able to seal it and uh, and make sure that it's protected. It was below grade before. Now it's exposed. So that's what uh, that's what we're going to use these funds for. Questions uh, for the mayor on this one? No. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And our last one is eighteen zero three zero in order to appropriate twenty thousand dollars from free cash and five thousand from disability commission funds for design costs of an ADA grant, whereas the city has been awarded uh, an FY18 municipal ADA 
Improvement Program grant from the Massachusetts Office on Disabilities in the amount of $250,000, whereas the project will fund accessibility improvements to the walkways serving the primary public buildings, including City Hall, the Municipal Office Building, and Memorial Hall. The project involves replacing concrete walkways with proper slopes, adjusting steep drop-offs, installing compliant handrails, lighting, wheelchair ramps, um, detectable warning panels, crosswalk safety improvements, along with the associated costs. And whereas the grant funds will cover the construction costs, the city must provide funds for the design. Therefore, uh, be it ordered that $5,000 is appropriated from the Disability Commission Fund established under Mass General Law uh, Section 40, uh, Chapter 40, Section 22G, and that $20,000 be appropriated from the FY18 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance to provide a total of $25,000 for design costs to leverage the ADA Improvement Grant. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. So you Public heard comment uh, on this one. Yeah, you heard very eloquently from uh, Chris Palamas, who's the chair of uh, the Disability Commission, who we are incredibly fortunate to have in our city, and he's really an expert in, um, in access and does work for the state and the university system and um, is uh, one of the, um, you know, one of the longtime people in the uh, in the advocacy movement here in, in Massachusetts. So he um, he working with Wayne, as you heard, uh, identified this grant opportunity, got an application in under the wire, and as he said, uh, there was a million dollars distributed for the whole state, um, and up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. We figured, you know, we'll get fifty thousand, we'll get something. We got two hundred fifty thousand. So we got the maximum, um, and effectively one quarter of the, all the money that was available in the state. So I think it speaks to uh, the work that the Disability Commission's been doing, and obviously um, Wayne's skills as a grant writer. He's prolific. Uh, and so, um, but the catch, of course, is that this is construction money only. Um, the other big catch is that we have to spend the money uh, by the end of this fiscal year. So we have a bit of a tight, uh, tight timeline. Um, and so uh, this is basically the money that we need to design the project, put the design bids together, go out to bid, which is you know, generally 10% of the construction costs is generally the rule of thumb, which is why we're asking for 25000 You know, Talking to the chair of the commission, um, we agreed that, if, that the commission would be willing to put forth $5,000 of its fund that it, that it manages um, and that I would put forward a recommendation to use 20000 to sort of put together the match. So I believe the Disability Commission met earlier this week, voted to recommend that, and so that's what this would do. This would give us the, the match. I would also ask, um, given the time frame, if, if, if you do indeed uh, agree to recommend this, that you would also consider recommending two readings um, because we'd like to um, – go out to bid as quickly as possible and get a contract signed, uh, given the short time frame. So we have something ready to go when, when spring begins, so we can get this money expended. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Mayor, if I can recall, I think it was somewhere June 2013 when we were the Committee on Disabilities. Yes. And we had no funding. We had nothing, absolutely nothing to even say we want to go out and do this and do that. And I had met with you and a former counselor in regards that we had invited to one of our meetings of not having any money at all in our budget. And we went to you, and I think it was yeah, Pat Shaughnessy at that meeting also, and you stepped right up to the plate to help us and guide us in the direction to go so that we somehow could go ahead and have a decent budget. And I want to thank you for that. It was a lot of work, and I think it was um, Chris, maybe Council, you could think of his name, who was our financial Chris director. Kyle. Yes. And he was fantastic, where he spent quite a bit of time and a lot of research on us. And this is why we went from the Committee on Disabilities to the Commission on Disabilities because of doing what we did so that we could have a change here of having a budget. Mm -hmm. And I am very proud of that because we have a decent budget 
thank God for people who park in handicapped parking. We have a nice little budget coming, and we have donated already to Florence um, two benches, one at the senior center, and I think we're coming a long way. And this is very important for the Commission on Disabilities. Of being able to have a budget where we can say yes we can offer you five thousand dollars and i want to thank you thank wayne and everybody involved here who's making this happen for the design work yeah thank you counselor and again that was essentially uh you had sponsored the order to accept the section of general law which basically re required us to we, we had kind of created our own local uh, disability related commission and by accepting that chapter of law we then fell under the state definition which is why we had to change the format and the makeup of the committee but then the the benefit was that um, any funds any uh, fines collected for handicap parking would go into a dedicated fund that the disability could commission could make recommendations for spending so so thank you and thank you to the disability commission for its continued work any other questions on this one I, I was just curious your, your reference is having to be spent by June, by the end of the fiscal year. Um, does that mean work completed or work under contract? Uh, well, the short what they've right? told us is uh, expended. So, but again, whether or not that's a hard and fast rule, yeah. um, obviously, you know, spring and summer is a good time to pour concrete. We're probably not going to, uh, so we want to get it done. So I think that's the concern. Um, it's a short time frame because they had these funds that are actually FY18 monies, and that is one of the issues sometimes when you get a grant awarded late in the year. I mean, I don't think they're going to, sorry, take it away. The problem is it's a it's a reimbursement grant, so um, uh, it's sometimes it, it's good to um, you reimburse for the money um, lest it get. Uh, sometimes on the federal level, the monies get swept up and, and taken away if it hasn't been spent yet. I'm not saying that's what would happen here, but um, that's the concern. But again, if, if there's not comfort with doing this on two readings, I'm, I'm comfortable waiting. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 And uh, I have nothing else. If no one else does, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. May I request a break? Sure. Yeah. That sounds great. All right, so we will recess and reconvene at 827. Huh? Right. <laughs>We are back. Um, recess has concluded. And so now we'll start with our financial orders. The first is uh, second reading, 18.004, in order to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for housing support services. A motion on this order. Made by Councilor Bard, seconded by Councilor Klein. Any further discussion? If not, let's have a roll call. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. 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 Okay, that order is approved. Um, 18.005, order to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for restoration of, of a jail farm parcel for to agricultural use. Is a motion on this order? Move to approve. And, okay, Councilor Barge makes the motion, seconded by Councilor Klein. Any discussion on second reading? Not all. Uh, let's do a roll call on this order as well. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Barge. Yes. Councilor yes. Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay. Passes unanimously. 18.007, in order to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for Mass Central Rail Trail Extension. Can kind I of a motion, please? Okay. Uh, made by Councilor Klein, seconded by Councilor Barge. Any discussion? <laughs> if not, roll call. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 Approved as well. 18.008 in order to appropriate Community Preservation Act funds for the Sergeant House expansion project at 82 Bridge Street. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Dwight. Um, any discussion? Roll call, please. <coughs> yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. 18.009, in order to appropriate CPA funds for affordable housing as part of Village Hill Apartments. A motion on this, please. So moved. Second. Made by Councillor Dwight, seconded by Councillor Bidwell. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. 18.010. In order to appropriate CPA funds to the conservation fund. To approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Um, 18.011, in order to appropriate CPA funds for uh, a Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity home on Garfield Avenue. To approve. Second. Made by Councilor Barge, seconded by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Now, 18.012, in order to appropriate CPA funds for three Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity affordable homes on Glendale Road. Move to approve. approve. Uh, made by Councillor Bidwell, seconded by Councillor Barge. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Now we're at 18.018 in order to appropriate $20,000 in Whiting Street Trust Funds. This is the first reading. Move to approve. So second. 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 Okay. Any discussion on this order? Okay. If not, roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. 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 That order passes on first reading. Um, 18.019, in order to rescind borrowing authority uh, for basically four projects. Is there a motion on this? So moved. Second. Made by Councillor Klein, seconded by Councillor Dwight. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 That passes on first reading. 18.020 in order to reprogram money for the Academy of Music stage doors um, to Academy of Music Foundation repair. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on this order? We have a roll call on this. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Lavar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Sharon. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Yes. With regards to item L, 18.028, this is an order to accept Mass General Law Chapter 64N, Section 3A, Local Option Sales Tax on marijuana sales, and if there's any objection to moving this to the end of our order so we take them very close together with the uh, ordinances relative to marijuana. Mm -hmm. The reason is I would like to have kind of a general discussion about the Council's process on all of these matters. So unless there's any objection, I will move it farther down and we will return to it. And that leaves us um, with 18.032. This is an order to appropriate $20,000 in free cash and $5,000 from the Disability Fund Commission, excuse me, Disability Commission Fund for design costs for the Americans with Disabilities Act grant that we just heard about. Is there a motion? Any discussion on this order? Okay, all, um, uh, roll call, please. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. 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 I would like to suspend Rule 14. Okay. Um, Councilor Barge moves to suspend the rules second. to allow for second reading, seconded by Councilor Dwight. 
Any discussion on the suspension of rules? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those no. Rules are suspended. There's a motion. Second reading. Second, second reading. Seconded by Councillor Shara. Any discussion on second reading? Uh, then roll call, please. Whenever we're ready. Yes. 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 So that is approved on second reading. Um, now we're on to orders. There are four items that are all related. Um, let me just read the read off all these four, and then we'll talk about them sort of as a group if there's no objection to that. 18.021, an order for King Street acceptance. 18.022, petition for King Street acceptance. 18.023, petition for Garfield Street acceptance. And 18.024, an order for Garfield Street acceptance. Um, according to state law, there's a process for how we need to deal with um, street acceptance matters. And the long and short of it is we need to refer it to two places. Well, actually, we need to refer it to the planning board. And then either the full council needs to have a hearing on it, or what we've basically done in the past is refer it to a committee and ask the committee to hold a hearing on it. The, the tricky part about this is we have an ordinance on the books, um, which is basically wrong and, and outdated, that makes reference to a commission that doesn't exist anymore, makes reference to the Public Works Commission, which was a successor to the, to the Board of Public Works, which also doesn't exist anymore. But that ordinance notwithstanding, which probably needs to be revised, if not uh, eliminated at some point, um, our solicitor did research. There's a memo in the materials that counselors have, which basically affirms that what has to happen before we can deal with these is to refer them to the planning board and also a body of the city council, which is just as good as the full city council. So my recommendation would be uh, to start, and others can have different opinions, obviously, but legislative matters frequently deals with uh, issues that the planning board also deals with, for example, zoning ordinances. Uh, so it might make sense to send this to legislative matters as well as the planning board. Is there any thought about that? Is there a motion in that regard? Make a motion. So Councilor Barge moves uh, to refer to the legislative matters and the planning board. Uh, is there a second for that? I'll second that. Yeah. Second. Uh, any discussion on those two referrals? Please. Uh, um, the, yeah, I mean, I, I think because we're actually trying to clean stuff up and it's problematic. And we also, as you note, the <laughs> dilemma of not actually having a, a, a dedicated body to this particular issue that we used to have. Um, it seems the legislative matters could certainly handle it, but I mean, you know, and it, would, it, it has to be, I wanted some clarity on this. It has to be a, a membership body of the council. It does, can't be a mixed body like transportation and parking or something like that. It does have to be the, a council or one of its subdivisions. Right. So, so thereby, TPC is out. Yes. So, so, you know, city resources, I mean, community resources would certainly be also viable, but I don't know, I don't know what the members of that body are concerned with. Uh, what their thoughts are okay. um, as it is I, I as as the chair of uh, legislative matters I have no objection to it going to that committee but okay it's one of those things obviously we don't do very often except when we did them a number of them at one time a couple of years right. ago um, well does the chair of community resources uh, have an opinion on the issue? As the chair of community resources, I'm happy if you want to punt it to community resources, but if you'd like to have it at legislative matters, that's also fine Well, I was, fine by I me. was musing about <laughs> punting, yes. It seemed, it <laughs> seemed so. Uh, <laughs> that's a legal term, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we have a beefy agenda looming, but mm. so do you. So uh, either way, it's, you know, it's. It's a slog for either committee, I think. And okay. Yeah, the only thing, oh, excuse me, Councilor Clint. I was just going to point out that the, the work involved is holding a hearing. Um, so we need to schedule that and obviously advertise it 14 days in advance. Um, well, I, I 
I know we had a discussion at the last meeting about um, the public works um, kind of previous, what used to be their agenda would go possibly to city services. And there was some question about that, but I had the impression that this was more appropriate for city services than <laughs> community resources or ledge. So um, I'm wondering, I see the chair no, it, shaking it, her head. If I might respond, Please, it, I right. mean, it seems to me like uh, because this is um, something done in conjunction with the planning board, for one, for one thing, the former ordinance committee, now legislative matters, typically um, was the place to go with these, especially if there was going to be a hearing that might be a joint hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and city services um, uh, only, only uh, well, it, it's not yet um, established as the city services and public works committee. That would be the only case I can see it would make sense to go there. Otherwise, the city services, not really. Um, so it, my question is, it, it, uh, is it required to go to legislative matters, um, particularly because no. of some? No. Okay. It could go to any, it could go to the full council or any of our subdivisions, according to Mass General Law. And there's an opinion from the solicitor for more background on this. And the motion on the floor is to the go to legislative, to legislative matters? matters and the planning board. So we've all now made our case for why we don't want this to go to our <laughs> committee. <laughs> so the, o the only way to the, sol the Solomonic uh, response would be to have this go to the full council, then we're all punished. So. I, 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 if I may, I was going to recommend that anyway. Um, this is, I, I, these are interesting petitions to begin with, and I think that there may be some community discussion, a larger community discussion anyway. So it might be appropriate to have it as a hearing or uh, or review here in the council on the council agenda, full council. The only note on that, I'm not opposed to that. Um, certain circumstances may require all of us to go out and, and take a view, do a site visit of some of these areas. So road trip. If you're interested in a road trip <laughs> into there, the highway business district. Uh, there's, there's a van. Good. There's a van. Yeah, there is. So that's only fine with me. Are you making a motion to amend the, the motion to change it? To yes, if I, uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to amend uh, the referral to actually come back to the full council instead of it seems kind of weird to refer something to the full council, but that's, I guess that's, <laughs> that's what's required here. I don't think it's a referral. I think it just means take it on to set a hearing. Right. So the motion will be to refer the planning board and um, begin the process of scheduling a hearing in the full city council on these matters. Yes. Which may or may not include us getting in a van. <laughs> okay. So is there a second to that amendment? I make a second. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment to the motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So now we have an amended motion to, re to refer this to the planning board and to schedule a hearing on these street acceptances in the full city council. Any further discussion on that motion? Councilor Bidwell. So we would, we would schedule this presumably so when we have the full hearing here, we, the planning board would already have met so we have their input? Would that be the desired sequence of events? Yes. Um, we need, yes, we, the planning board needs to act first. Right. Or in 45 days if they don't act, but they will. So, yeah, we'll have to coordinate with them. Yeah. Any other discussion on the motion? Um, if not, we can do it by voice vote. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. For clarity, this is for all four items? Thank yes, as a group. Right, as a group. So yeah, yes, we'll take this to mean A, B, C, and D, the ones I read off. Thank you. Yes. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you. You are. Um, now, 18.029, in order to designate certain school employees as special municipal employees. This was not a financial order. Um, So I will read it, and then the mayor is here to provide some explanation. This is upon the recommendation of Ma uh, Mayor David J. Narkowitz. 
in order to designate certain school employees as special municipal employees. Ordered that whereas certain Northampton municipal employees serve as part-time athletic coaches and as extracurricular club advisors in the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School. And whereas the students of both Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School benefit significantly from the expertise that such municipal employees bring to their service as coaches and advisors. And whereas in order for such municipal employees to serve as part-time coaches and advisors, in addition to their full-time municipal employment, they must comply with the requirements of the Conflict of Interest Law, Mass General Law, Chapter 268A, Section uh, 1, etc. Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 268A, Section 20 prohibits Northampton municipal employees from holding a contract with the city, including the contract to coach athletics or to advise extracurricular clubs, unless such municipal employee qualifies for an exemption under Section 20. Uh, and whereas, in order to qualify for certain exemptions contained um, in that same section, such coaches and advisors must be designated as special municipal employees um, as provided by uh, the previously mentioned section. Uh, now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby classifies all part-time athletic coaches and extracurricular club advisors in the Northampton Public Schools and or at the Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School as that of a special municipal employee under the terms and provisions of Chapter 268A of the Massachusetts General Laws. Is there a motion to approve this order? Make, make a motion to approve. Second. Do we have a second? Yeah. From Councilor Dwight. So. Mr. Mayor, would you? Yes. Um, so the special municipal employee designation um, uh, is a is a part of Mass General Law, which basically provides limited relief um, uh, to our uh, state's um, conflict of interest rules, um, and the, it was designed basically. The best way to explain it is we uh, the council over time has designated most of our boards, most of our you know boards and commissions and um, as special municipal employees, um, you know planning board, cons, com, etc. One of the most common um, reasons for that, and pretty much they're the same everywhere, is that read um, read by the letter of the law. If you are a wet a wildlife biologist, say, for example, um, and you are on the CONSCOM, if you weren't a special municipal employee, um, you would be prohibited from ever representing any Northampton client before any board, before, you know, if you're an attorney and you serve on the, so it creates this um, untenable limitation that basically nobody who has any kind of a professional um, you know, from lots of different professions wouldn't be able to serve on these boards. So that's why we do this. And then the other piece of it is holding two contracts, um, which again, under uh, uh, Mass General Law, you're not allowed to hold two contracts. Uh, but by designating special municipal employee, um, it acknowledges the fact that you, that, you know, so in the case of what I'm putting forward now, we have some circumstances where someone is a teacher and, you know, they're, they have a, they're, they're a teacher or they're, uh, and they also want to be a coach or an extracurricular, you know, advisor. Um, technically, uh, that would that's not allowed unless they've been designated as a special municipal employee. We even have some circumstances where we have a firefighter who wants to be an assistant coach for one of the Smith Vogue athletic teams. Technically, um, well, not technically, they they it, it's as if they're holding two different contracts. But because of the fact, and the and the law is pretty clear about this, that because of the fact that they're not, you know, they're working uh, a certain number of minimal hours, they're not actually getting paid a lot of money. Our coaches don't get paid a lot of money. That if they're designated as a special municipal employee, that that's allowed, that they can do that. So um, we had a couple of uh, we had a case arise where. Uh, where, an, where somebody who, in one case, a, a firefighter wants to be a coach next year uh, for a Smith Vogue team. Um, and so, um, and then in other cases, we have um, people that, uh, teachers who want to also uh, lead extracurricular clubs afterwards uh, for a very small stipend. So um, the idea would was to basically, and you, you don't actually designate a person, you designate positions. So it's not like I'm designating, you know, Joe Smith of the planning board. It's like the planning board is designated as anyone who serves on the planning board is a special municipal employee. So that's why we're asking to have the um, coaches and extracurricular club advisors for both the, the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vogue to have this designation. Thank you. Councilor Dwight. 
Um, does this in any way affect bargaining status uh, from any union member? Not at all. Okay. No. Adversely or? Not at all. No. And in okay. fact, the, I mean, all the stipends are bargained under the contract. So they're, they're, bar all, they're bargained positions like the, the coaches and, and extracurriculars. Those are bargained positions. It's, it's more about the appearance that you're holding two separate contracts right. or the appearance that um, you're, that you, um, you know, are serving on this board, and then you may represent somebody, you know, before any other city board. Uh, like, you know, uh, most city employees would not be allowed to do that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you would, you know, city employee. We just read the article about my new colleague in East Hampton. You know, not being allowed to be in any way involved, but going before the license commission mm -hmm. or going before anything like that. Um, but, uh, but. You may be an attorney who's serving on the planning board. You would also be barred from representing any client in Northampton before the license commission if you didn't have this special municipal employee well, exemption, it's, 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 even though you're just a unpaid planning board member. Yeah, it's one of the prime legs of the conflict of interest law, mm -hmm. uh, trying to prevent that conflict. But as you say, this, I mean, this, it seems almost a natural assumption that after school clubs, for instance, might be presided over by a teacher. Exactly. Who is, you know. Yeah. And obviously, lots of coaches. You know, many of us play so for coaches who are just teachers. generally took for granted, actually, and never considered. Of course, would be uh, prohibited from actually, if if they live on, under current law without the exemptions, would be in conflict of the mm -hmm. of the uh, conflict of interest yeah. law. So. No, there's yeah, there's further things you need to do. I mean, there's it doesn't give you a full exemption, so it's not giving people carte blanche. It's still uh, you know, you, you still there are still things you have to do and disclosures you have to make, but this just prevents you know this weird situation where you could never have anybody who's a professional serving on these boards, or they just couldn't work at all in the city of Northampton, and we'd have a hard time attracting people if that were the case. So, and again, people who um, you know. Obviously, if someone has a client that's coming before the board they're serving on, they most certainly have to recuse themselves. Right. And that doesn't get rid of that. It's just if they're in another board or another arena, um, you know, we have people that work for architecture firms, you know, that serve on the, you know, Ken Jodry is a great example, somebody who was on the planning board forever. And, you know, Kalo and Bennett did work on the police station. He wasn't involved, but his firm did. So technically, if he wasn't designated a special municipal employee, he couldn't serve on the planning board. So that's sort of the situation. So, uh, and if you go back through time, um, uh, the city clerk has a collection of all these. We've sort of designated people over time. Um, most of the main boards are designated, but there are some special circumstances too. Um, Councilor Labarge may remember when we had to hire a special council to do zoning regulations for the landfill. Um, <laughs> the uh, we designated that person a special municipal employee because. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to do any other legal work in Northampton. So that was one case where we did that. So mm -hmm. there are worse things. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> any other questions for the council? Okay. Uh, so thank you. Um, we ready for a roll call on this order? Whenever you're ready. Yes. Um, Councilor Nash. Yes. <laughs> Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. 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 We had a first and second on that. We had a first and second on that. I just don't remember. Yes. We're also okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. So thank you. Um, Eighteen point zero three zero now in order to accept an easement at Village Hill. Um, this is upon the recommendation of the Office of Planning and Sustainability. Uh, order that whereas Mass Development uh, slash the Community Builders, now Hospital Hill LLC, received a special permit for the master plan and redevelopment of the former Northampton State Hospital. Permit originally dated September 19th, 2002, with subsequent amendments. Uh, and whereas the special permit identified areas for permanent open space protection and public access to and through the open space from the developed portions of the property for the purposes of providing non-vehicular access from the city to the project area and across the project area north, south, and east, west. 
and whereas each development project at the former Northampton State Hospital has included various links that created a connected network of pedestrian and bicycle trails through the project. And whereas the City Council has accepted the other various sections of these pedestrian and bicycle links, and whereas Kent Pecoy and Son Construction, Inc. received a permit for the subdivision of land and site plan approval on May 18, 2016, and it included the offer of all the public access easements as part of the development and in accordance with the original special permit granted for the redevelopment of the Northampton State Hospital to provide north-south and east-west connections as substantially shown on the attached map. Be it ordered that the City Council accept the easements as shown and authorize the Mayor to sign the public access easements uh, in order for them to be recorded permanently at the Register of Deeds. So a motion Move approval. Order. Second. Um, made, made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Councilor Bidwell? I would actually like to see this uh, referred to committee, uh, perhaps community resources. <coughs> I, there's a, a number of Village Hill residents who are my constituents who pay a lot of attention to open space and public access issues up there. And I suspect they didn't know this was on the agenda tonight. I only realized it a couple days ago myself. And where it, has, it hasn't had a chance for airing in other, any other committee that I'm aware of, um, I would think it'd be appropriate to give a little opportunity for input from the folks at Village Hill. So I would uh, ask that we, can, that we refer this I'll defer to the Chair of Community Resources, but that might be an appropriate committee for this to, to go to. So can we have an introduction from the Mayor generally and then go back to your suggestion, Council? Mr. Mayor, do you want to? Certainly. I, the, the only thing I would add to um, this is that I would say to Councilor Bidwell is that these trails have already been built. Mm -hmm. um, the development's been built. Um, the homes have been sold. And, and it was actually a condition of the special permit. Um, and it was also part of the master plan that Hello. these public access trails Sorry, Eric. Um, and so, um, again, I, I don't think there's any issue with that. Uh, you know, if you want to let residents be more informed about it, um, it's just it's it's. Um, uh, I'm not really sure there's much choice at this point to not grant the easement. So, but I but I understand if people want to, if, if you want to have them. Air if if totally there's fine. not something time sensitive, it's just sort of a matter of courtesy to. That's fine. That's uh, fine. Yeah. No, I mean, again, we're doing this after the fact, and so it's not a emergency at this point, but that was one of the requirements is that they would give the, build them and then give them easements. And it's, you know, part of the whole trail system and uh, rail trail that, that was required to be built as well. So I, I don't have a problem if you want to do that. That's fine. But I, I just want to give you the background. Yeah. It's not something proposed at this point. Right. Some <laughs> of them are like walking on those trails now. So. I have a question. What's the process if it goes to committee for engaging with the community other than having it on the agenda like it is tonight in our? The difference would be that there would be a chance to actually notify folks, put it on the list, serve up there. It could very well be for the reasons we've heard that no one would show up, but uh, I would just like to do it as a courtesy. So you're going to do the notification personally or the committee is or I'm just curious what the process will be? I would be glad to put it out to the, the list serve up there and otherwise put it put it out there. And if there's other ways more formally through the committee that we want to get the word out, I'd, I, I'd confer with the committee chair. While recognizing the importance of notifying the abutting community, this is actually, it is a greater community issue because it is public access. And as the mayor pointed out, it was one of the principal tenants of establishing the whole uh, redevelopment up there on Village Hill. So uh, while I understand you would want to appeal to abutters and or people proximate to it, uh, it's also a community discussion that, that should be made available, or at least the, and, and insofar as I think Councilor Bidwell's listserv is comprehensive as far as that goes for his community, the, the community at large might not necessarily, we don't have one for the community at large. Today. So. But that said, I, I I will actually second his his motion to refer, and um, and yeah, leave it at that. Okay, so we'll take your first comment as a motion to refer to the committee on community resources. Councilor Dwight seconds. Um, again, germane to the motion to refer. When is the next meeting of community resources? <laughs> That's right. Right. It's a little bit later. It's, it was a holiday. 
Tuesday. Right. So it's an unusual day. Right, right. President's Day. Yeah. President's, President's Day. Day. Right. Right. The collective okay. presidents. Well, good. So then we have the next council meeting on the 15th to announce perhaps what, what we're going to do. Right. Scheduling, again, is not open, subject to open meeting law. You can discuss scheduling. So we could have an idea of when, so as Councilor Dwight mentions, it's important for the whole community. I would just like to actually inform people rather than just create the appearance of scrutiny. I want to actually have a plan for getting it out. Sounds like we do. Um, so good. So Councilor uh, uh, Bidwell makes the motion to refer, second by Councilor Dwight. Any further discussion on the referral? Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those no. The matter is referred. <coughs> Great. Um, we have five items left on our agenda. I'm bringing back down um, 10L, which is 18.028. Um, that's an order to accept Mass General Law, Chapter 64N, Section 3A, and local option sales tax on marijuana sales. Um, and I will read it in the others, but I think it would be allowable and in order um, to have just a brief discussion as a council on um, how we will handle the various measures, ordinances, and this order that have to do with retail marijuana in the city. Um, you heard from people express their views at public comment tonight. Um, my takeaway is pretty straightforward. They want a forum to come where they can give their their thoughts on all this. So I think that is the first question for us before we read the details of these. I'd like to have a discussion about how we're going to do that. Councilor Dwight. I'd first like to address some of the comments that I heard, which was asking to have a seat at the table, which actually is the, the in fact, um, not only they have a seat at the table, everyone has a seat at the table for the discussion, that no one's excluded from that. Um, when these things go to the various committees, uh, they not only is there an open invitation, uh, the, the hope is that they will attend those meetings and participate in those conversations when it gets referred to committees. So that just so it's understood that there's not a special seat for special people who get to weigh in on this. This is the community at large. Once again, it's a public deliberative process. So, and in fact, actually mandated in many aspects by the state. There's there's several opportunities for public discussion on. Uh, as this thing gets slowly introduced in its various manifestations, it still haven't been established, as everyone noted yet. So anyway, so um, uh, although a larger community forum, the uh, kind of a loosely uh, established community forum, I don't not I'm not sure. Um, if we do it as a council, it becomes complicated. Um, or the deliberative body, and if we're presiding over it, that would be essentially a hearing as opposed to a forum. Um, you know, there's things like charrettes and knockout groups and things that aren't necessarily exclusively council sponsored, where maybe that'd be even more appropriate. But um, so I'm saying I'm not even offering a suggestion because I'm not really sure what this would look like and how it would function. Okay, thank you. Could I ask um, maybe the mayor can speak to this? I'd like, like to get a sense of the timelines that are involved in part posed by the state law and what the mayor is thinking in that regard. Well, um, the timelines are, are, are tight and only in that, and the problem of course is we don't actually have a fully approved regulation yet. The commission has put the regulation out for public comment. Councilor Nash mentioned they're doing hearings around the state. Um, they have set a timeline in terms of wanting to get the final regulations passed by March and have applications available then. I think applications are available in April. April, April 1. April 1. And the expectation is that the licenses would be issued by July 1st uh, of this year. Um, so that's the time frame. Again, there's, uh, but then there's the whole licensure process that would have to happen at the state level. I mean, this is mostly a state process. Uh, uh, my, the, proposals I put forward are really just adapting our current zoning, which uh, we already adapted once for medical marijuana, but now adapting it to this new um, form of marijuana, both retail and production. So um, a lot of the questions, and including some of the ones I heard t uh, tonight, are really 
going to be answered by the commission. Some of us attended a um, an MMA uh, breakout session where one of the commission members was there, and she was very clear that we're really our goal is to to develop pretty um, pretty substantial state regulations and things like inspections and things like that would be handled by the state. Um, you know, when when Netta opened its uh, medical dispensary, you know, the building inspector inspected it like any building, and um, you know, uh, the normal inspections that we do for any building, but then there were state inspections that had to take place as a condition of the license. So, so that's really the, the process, but we're still not quite sure how it's going to play out. Um, and there still are some final decisions. Uh, that, that, you know, they're, they're going out to hear comment and they could make changes to the regulation. So, Councilor Dwight. Uh, and it's also worth pointing out there was some allusion to uh, social clubs or social consumption clubs or whatever the hell they're designed to call essentially pot bars. And those actually are separate and what, I, as I understand, require a ballot measure in order to establish that system in town. So it's another process that's separate from this process completely. So they're, that's uh, why we didn't. I didn't. Put, we didn't address right. them in the zoning because not, it does require, um, according to the law, we don't know what the commission may do in the regulations. But yet, yeah, uh, ten percent of the electorate signing a petition right. to put it on the ballot. It's a citizens' petition um, that requires the in a state election year. Right. Um, so, so which would be this year. Right. So um, it's not happening this year. Probably that's not. Pretty, pretty yeah. That that's not likely. Yeah. So that's the other one I know that people are hearing about because the commission did vote to include it as part of the regulations, right. but um, but the process is sort of laid out in the in the law. So, so I, I think there's time on that one. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's important to note there are, there will be many 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 bites of the apple as we go forward on this process and there will be many public public processes including applicants have to participate in the public process mm -hmm. uh community impact process as well which is inviting the community to come and yeah. talk to them and have the community talk about their <coughs> specific sites mm -hmm. so um there are there are opportunities what i'm hearing what i was hearing i took my takeaway <coughs> with yours as well is that a larger kind of more uh omnibus structure that would allow people to weigh in but I don't I honestly don't know what that looks like and I don't know if it's our place to actually sponsor that because I think thereby that puts us as the presiding group and it, it again it has people testifying as opposed to people discussing and you so. also want to be careful as I think you may have been alluding to that these, these are zoning ordinances right. that have a very specific legal requirement about public <coughs> hearings and so if you set up some alternative, then you're potentially, you know, yeah. someone's equal access to a hearing is being denied if there's a side hearing that, that you're collecting information. So that would just be the one concern. It's also the side hearing actually would have no um, necessarily, uh, necessarily have any bearing other than an information gathering thing. But it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, it's not supposed to, uh, it's not part of the uh, deliberative process. And then, then I would also say is that this is essentially the process that we followed for medical marijuana zoning. Um, you know, there was a quite there was uh, there were zoning ordinances filed, and uh, there was a lot of public input at the planning board level. There was a lot of input at the city council level, and um, and you actually made changes to them in in some cases. So I mean, there is going to be a lot of process around it. So, but I agree with Councillor Nash. I would encourage people <coughs> to go to that hearing in Holyoke because that's where some of those questions are that's where you're gonna have the, the most impact on some of those questions right. is talking directly to the Commission right. um, so because we're not it's you know th a lot of those issues are not going to be within local purview So we're gonna go to <clears throat> Councillor Nash next but I just exercise some prerogative and ask question about is about the fact that these are zoning um, I gather another thing I gather from people is there's an impression that we need to finalize our zoning before that April 1st date when licenses are, are taken out. Can you speak to that? Um, about it's less about the licensure. It's probably more about when they file the zoning permit because that's really the trigger for zoning that when you, you, know, when you file a zoning uh, right. application, it's the zoning that's on the books at the time you file the application right. that counts. So it's less about the license, but really 
um, people right. are going to be applying for licenses based on locations, and then they're going to probably be going through the zoning process. So that's important for people to understand. Like, I think there's this idea that we need to get everything done by April 1st. However, I'm trying to understand personally how the licenses relate to zoning uh, permit applications. Must you be licensed first before you then go and make the, the zoning application? Yeah, I mean, we... we um it's kind of as as is often the case, you know, when, when you're doing a development deal, you're often you you've got to right. you've got to purchase, you know, uh, you've got a contract that you'll purchase it, but it's subject to getting the permits, getting the licenses, getting all those things. Right, so I right. think in this case, you're probably going to have people either signing leases or signing purchase and sales, then being able to go to the commission to say, see, I've got site control at least for a limited amount of time to file the application. And then they're going to go through the application process because you know the the commission is probably going to look at site suitability. They're going to want to look at those kinds of issues. Yeah. So, but again, the, the um, if you read the 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 law and you read the commission regulations, we don't even act have to do anything in our zoning if we don't want to. I mean, we but um, we think it's responsible we to. Want to. We right. want to. So, I think it's responsible to call right. these uses out and and right. put them in there. Um, and and we have made some modifications, but but you, know, <laughs> you could just say this is a retail use, and we're just going to treat it like a retail use and not even change your zoning. Um, so that is one other possibility. Good, thank you. So now we had Councilor uh, Nash and then Councilor Klein. Yeah, I, well, so I attended that that same workshop and and found it very informative and that the, the, one of the things that I took from that was that it's the day that whoever, you know, the applicant pulls that application, it's whatever we have on the books. And that if on April 1st we have, you know, have these, this language change, which is largely what the, the, uh, these zoning changes are about, um, then, um, then that's what they'll be subject to. Um, but I, I, what I hear, other people talking about is you know like setting a cap and um, and restricting locations and that that does get into a much more involved proce uh, process than you know adding adding some language to existing zoning and that um, I'm wondering if we can realistically actually do all of that before April 1st yeah. or I didn't. I guess I didn't hear what you heard. I think if you were going to put in place a, a a separate licensure regulatory process, which you could theoretically do, you could right. put in place your. You, Northampton could create its own separate license in addition to the state license. It could do that if it wanted to. I think that would probably have to be in place. But I don't think zoning, um, the uh, what you know when they pull the permit does not freeze our zoning. It's when they it's when they file their zoning permit is when <coughs> that would happen. So um, I, I think I heard it differently. OK. But, all right, I'll, I'll yeah. um, we'll find out on Monday. OK. <laughs> uh, th definitely, that's a good question. But And things like the, the, the cap could be imposed a year from now. It could be, I mean, the cap is a, is a cap that you can either do or not do. Um, the fact that if somebody pulls their license, the first license gets pulled, that doesn't mean there's no caps ever possible. Like an ordinance could be adopted to put a cap in place if you wanted to. So I don't think that, it doesn't, uh, it, it's not gonna prevent that from happening. But if so, 10 applicants pulled licenses on April 1st and people wanted to set, and we wanted to set a cap at five, too late because we haven't established that yet. That is uh, that that I would agree with you on if they actually issue the ten licenses. I would agree with you on that. Okay. Yep. Councillor Klein. Um, I wanted to ask about kind of the internal process. We have five orders before us, and I know that they're pretty much zoning related. But I'm wondering um, if you did have conversation with the Northampton Prevention Coalition, SPIFI, uh, the Board of Health. You know, did was their input? Um, is this is their input reflected in what we're seeing here? I've had conversations with my health director about it, and uh, and I certainly understand the concerns that they that those other organizations have. But no, they were not part of developing the zoning. I wanted to put the zoning out there to sort of start that formal public process. 
Um, that was my that was my goal. And again, in many ways, I was following <laughs> the uh, the guide of what we had adopted for medical. We're basically um, following pretty much mirroring what we did with medical. Um, and so that was the starting point. And obviously, the planning board and the council has the ability to amend. So, and there's a very well-defined public process. So, so as a follow-up, the, the, the so difficulty that we had, though, I have to say, is um, the regulate. We really just saw the draft regulations about a, you know a couple of weeks ago, and so I wanted to get something started in process. <laughs> Um, because then we're really going to have the, if we want to have a three month process or, you know, a long process, that's been the challenge here. I mean, the legislature already got a six month extension from when the law said they were supposed to get this done. Um, and, and, but now there's a hard deadline of July 1st. And so everyone's sort of scrambling to meet that, which is, you know, some communities have enacted moratoriums basically to buy themselves more time. Um, that would not be something uh, we could do. Um, without a ballot initiative, uh, so um, so that's not something that's really feasible. So um, again, uh, I think there's still going to be plenty of opportunity for conversations. And as I said, and when I introduced it, I did not put a, a cap in, but that would not prevent the. Ca and, I, and actually, I didn't put a cap in because I don't really think it's appropriate in zoning. I don't think that's the purview of the zoning board to make that. That's a policy and political decision. Um, which is what we get the big bucks to do. So I think it would be more, if there's going to be a cap, I think it should be the council who should, uh, who should develop that, um, not, not the planning board. So I just have a follow-up kind of statement to that question and the answer. Um, I know from talking to them that all of those bodies that I mentioned, uh, MPC, Spiffy, the Board of Health, they all, um, have expressed an interest in doing some kind of presentation or more formal kinds of presentations for the council. And I know we're talking about either a hearing or some kind of public process, but um, I think it's really important to bring that expertise into the room in some way so that they actually have um, a forum to share their expertise. So I just want to make sure that um, you know, we don't end up necessarily doing something like public comment here in the chambers where people have three minutes. We saw, you know, the Spiffy coalition coordinator and the MPC uh, director kind of, you know, rushing to use their three minutes to share uh, the expertise that they have. Um, but I think they need the forum to really uh, share their, their thoughts and their expertise. Well, thank you. And before we go, Pass on other counselors. I'll just say my expectation is you know, we have to send these to some committees, and what my hope is that the committees then take on that leadership role to structure the forum that you're talking about, counselor. So we had Councilor Murphy, and then Councilor Bidwell, and then Councilor Carney. Mm -hmm. Well, it, there, this is a very large question, but the ordinances in front of us are zoning, right. and so we I think we need to keep at least the discussion right now on that. Now, if on April 1 you can apply, and part of your application is you must identify a location, then you're going to need a contractual relationship tying up that location, which means you're going to get that probably before April 1st. As soon as you have a contractual connection to that property, you can apply for the zoning. So I think April 1 is too late because if March 1 you sign a contract, to back up your application that's going to go out on April 1st to tie up that property, then based on that contract, you're going to apply for zoning. So I think the horse is going to be gone by April 1st if, in fact, they're required to have the location tied up subject to the license, then they're going to have the contract to go apply for the permit. Um, you might want to check with Councilor Sewell on that, but I would suspect that could happen that way. So if, if well, I, again, I, I mean, as I said before, the regulations don't require you to do this zoning. And in, if, if, you, if we didn't make these changes, then we would treat retail as retail and we would treat industrial as industrial, which is what my proposed ordinances do. So I, that's what's going to happen. I mean, I think we'd be protected in either case, meaning that you're not going to be able to um, 
build an industrial facility in a residential neighborhood and you're not going to be able to open a retail facility in an industrial area, you know, vice versa. So I think we'll be fine on that. But I just think as far as the zoning is concerned, if we don't change it very quickly, it's going to be over by April 1st mm -hmm. if all the applications go in and they have contracts for a while and they've already filed. Um, just an observation. Councilor Bidwell. Oh, were you finished? Yep. Councilor Bidwell. I, I, I understand Councilor Murphy's uh, concern about the timing issues, and I, I, I get it. I do think there would be some advantage in terms of clarity to to move the zoning piece of this uh, along, recognizing that the, that timetable concern. Um, the what I heard in in, in, in public comment, in, a, in addition to a desire for a conversation about the, the pros and cons of some sort of cap, was this notion of some portion of our three percent being dedicated to prevention and education, public education which I find a very interesting concept. I don't know if it's workable. I don't know exactly how we would do it or if we have the <coughs> time to do it for that matter. Do you have any comment on that? Um, the, probably the best vehicle for that is in the um, host agreement, which in this case I would negotiate with them. Um, and that would probably be the, the forum under which we would, you know, include what things would be used for. So that is, you know, pro and obviously, um, it's it's a host fee, and so the goal of it is to try to provide funds directed towards something related to the activity. So um, whether it's helping to support you know health department inspections or whether it's helping to inspect or to do out, uh, outreach and education, I, I you know I, that those are that's right. certainly the kinds of things right. that would be in a host agreement. Um, I don't think it could be mandated necessarily, but but it's uh, in zoning, for example. But yes, Councilor. No, no, no. Uh, Councilor yeah, Arnie was next, yeah. and then Councilor Dwight. By the sure. way, I just, I'm yeah. sorry. I just want to make clear I, I'm still going to preside even when the. Sorry about that. Sorry. Oh, no problem. So, Councilor Carney. Uh, just um, maybe a couple of process questions. Uh, the four of these are um, zoning, are, are zoning <clears throat> ordinances, and so they have to go to legislative matters. It's whether or not we want to, uh, so it sounds like we're talking about two things. These, we do need to send to legislative matters if we don't also send them someplace else. And I think the other part is we're talking about a community-wide discussion that probably makes sense to be separate from the referral of these four zoning things because these, these in and of themselves, um, as the mayor pointed out, really just kind of expand what we already have for, for medical. The bigger questions like um, where's like the uh, local option sales tax and things like that, um, I'm not sure if that's something that would, I mean, it's related to, med to uh, retail marijuana, but it is, um, it's in a different category. It's not zoning. And so um, not to, you know, bung up the works here, but I think that we know that we need to send these four to we know they have to go to legislative matters. It's just whether or not we want to have an additional committee look at these same zoning ordinances and have more than one committee do that, and whether or not um, there might be some sort of public forum. And the point that Councilor Dwight point pointed out is that we can't really have, the city council can't just hold a public forum without it becoming more of a legal uh, hearing of some sorts. So <coughs> I think what we need to do is deal with the matters that we have right here, um, at least for the referral. And um, we, could, we could also brainstorm about some way to have a community, dis broader community discussion. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Dwight, did you? Um, actually, I was going to, uh, the Councilor Bidwell's point, there's also, it's worth noting that uh, and I realize it's a thin reed to cling to, but um, the state collection of taxes <clears throat> is also supposed to be dedicated to many of the same things, education, rehabilitation, and such like. But we know how well that's worked out with the lottery funds and the, and the turnpike and such. But but there is that's actually a constituent part of uh, their their tax their tax taste as opposed to ours as well. Mm -hmm. 
the other thing was that <coughs> we we can also establish <coughs> an ad hoc committee or a special committee. I mean, to Council Carney's point and to the mayor's, discuss the zoning as zoning. We're, we're just zoning a particular enterprise that has some unique dimensions to it, but to discuss it as such. <coughs> the other issues that <coughs> I heard raised <coughs> can be discussed more in similar to what we did in community resources, a downtown, review of the downtown economy, something about and, and get stakeholders to share and participate in the conversation without any particular legislation pending. As the mayor points out, we can develop ordinances as we go relative to these things. Uh, and, and also, just a side note worth noting, the cap on liquor stores is not our cap. That's a state-enforced cap. Mm -hmm. That's a, the, the state did that. We actually, or at least me, I'll speak for myself, would like to see that cap either obliterated or expanded in any event. But um, whatever we discuss can be discussed in the context of that committee. That would be a longer review, give us the pacing and the timing, that's not without our backs up against the wall about holding us because these things are actually kind of critical to have in place by because the law changes whether we say yay or nay and in order and as the mayor points out also for a moratorium to occur in this community would require a ballot initiative because we voted it was I think closer to 85 percent in favor and as <coughs> the state law that's developing is basically saying we are it were an opt out, and we'd have to opt out by ballot. And I suspect, given the, the tendency of the vote, that would not be a very successful petition drive. So, so we proceed the way it's laid out before us deal with the zoning as zoning, deal with the, uh, the tax as tax, and then deal with marijuana and retail marijuana and what it means for the community in a more, in a, in a, in a more expansive venue without the pressures and the and the clock ticking. Good, thank you. Yeah, Councilor Sher. So following that outline, um, so zoning falls under community resources purview. So just note to note again, our meeting isn't until the 27th of February, and Legislative Matters is meeting on the 12th, is Well, right? we, yes, and we may be meeting on the 27th as well. Well, and the other point on that is we also, since these are zoning, we have to have a hearing right. on them, and so that's a 14-day minimum. Yeah. So probably that's not such a problem if we're going past. I mean, the earliest we could get in the paper be next mm -hmm. week, and then it's 14 days mm -hmm. after that. Four, two weeks, right? <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I think that could be okay. Okay. But I'm just, now I'm. But that's a good how point. How are you going to meet? How's legislative matters going to meet? Af on? <laughs> after you guys, as we were discussing that during okay. the break. So yeah. Okay. Trying to figure out how to I meet. Do the problem is, of course, this 14-day clock, along with other state clocks ticking in the other direction, right. we're going to get pinched. So. so it seems like to me um, this process, I mean, to me, this has been helpful. I feel like I have a clearer idea of what process we want to set up. We want to set up a good process generally, and we also want to deal with the immediate issues that are before us. So it seems to make sense, as some counselors have said, to refer these to where they need to go. And then I think the thing that we should reach agreement on is there should be some committee, it sounds like it should be the Committee on Community Resources, um, to kind of make a commitment to hold uh, kind of a general community meeting on, on the other issues. It may not even be necessary to refer the zoning issues to community resources since Legislative Matters is going to hold the hearing. There's like a balance between ref giving people enough opportunities to comment and re dispersing it too much. You know, we want to have like one major forum that would, or a certain number of, of forums. So that's my sense, Councilor. I would certainly say if both those meetings are happening on the same day back to back, then it doesn't make sense. Do oh, is that what you expect, actually? Is that what you're saying? Potentially. Like it, it looks like the 27th yeah. will be both meetings. It seems possible, yeah. Right. Okay. So I guess what I like to do is, as others have said, is refer these, they go to finance and legislative matters, and then like, like Village Hill, I'd like at our next meeting to have some kind of something we could report to the public about what to expect, where do you want to go if you want to provide more comment on this, and then get both sides uh, to the table on all these different issues. So do you think the Community Resources Committee would be, would be an okay forum and you can yes. think about the scheduling of, of that kind of thing? I feel like I should be consistent and say, shouldn't city services do this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, break out into a fight here. <laughs> 
Okay, so that, that, <laughs> yeah. works for, that works for me. Everyone feels good about that process? All right, so then what I'll just do is read through these five, and then we can refer them as, as necessary. Um, so 18.023, um, I read the title already. Uh, whereas by virtue of an initiative petition presented to the voters as question four on the 2016 state election ballot, the voters of Massachusetts voted to allow persons 21 and older to possess, use, and transfer marijuana and products containing marijuana concentrated. And whereas by virtue of Master General Law, Chapter 64N, Section 3A, the legislature has authorized cities and towns to impose a local sales tax upon sale or transfer of marijuana or marijuana products by a marijuana retailer operated within the city or town to anyone other than a marijuana establishment at a rate not greater than 3% of the total sales price received by the marijuana retailer as a consideration for the sale of marijuana or, or marijuana products. And whereas the authorization contained in Section 3A is a local option requiring the City Council to accept the provision thereof, now therefore be ordered that the City of Northampton accepts the provisions of Section 3A of Mass General Law Chapter 64N and hereby imposes a 3% local sales tax on the total sales price received by the marijuana retailer operating within the city as a consideration uh, for the sale of marijuana or marijuana products to anyone other than a marijuana establishment. A marijuana retailer shall pay said local sales tax to the Commissioner of Revenue at the same time and in the same manner as the sales tax do uh, do the Commonwealth. Is there a motion to refer this to the Finance Committee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor Chair. Any discussion on the referral? Um, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is referred to finance. Um, there are the next one says a group? Absolutely. Um, this is 18 18.0027, 18.033, 18.034, 18.034. Um, they are all ordinances. Um, relative to retail marijuana um, and the zoning that governs the establishment and some and some places cultivation in the city, what districts, buffer zones that some people in public comment talked about, um, some, a technical one about non-conforming use. I just wanted to give kind of a picture for the public of the different topics that are in the zoning. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, well, do you want to do both committees? I thought we were just going to do it, send zoning to legislative matters, and then community resources was going to kind of originate a, a more general forum. Sorry. No, it's. So, move to a, refer to legislative okay? matters. Okay. Check. As a group? As a group. Discussion As a group. on the referral. And the uh, planning board? It's a, the required planning board referral as well. Right? Thank you. So, without objection, also the planning board. Um, any discussion on the referral for all four of these ordinances? Well, just a, a process, not to be, but <laughs> do we need to refer things to planning board, or aren't they automatically, if they're zoning, they automatically go to the planning board? I just don't Suppose remember us actually auto. referring things to the planning board. Well, we'll do it for good measure, perhaps. Yeah, I, I just, okay. But, yeah, certainly things originate there all the time, it seems. So I think you're right. Yeah. Good question, but we'll do it for fun. For fun, yeah, just belts and suspenders. And exactly. Yeah. Um, good. If there's no other discussion on the referral, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So those are all referred. Uh, is there any new business this evening? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.